Hello everybody and thanks for joining me yet again. Uh, I think my channel's been what open for maybe five months now. And uh, an email I get on a regular basis is uh, things like uh, I've got uh, something in the video I want to remove, I want to add somebody to my video. Uh, here's an example. Hello Crips. Could you please help and tell me how I can duplicate myself in videos? Well, you can do that with green screen, obviously, but if you're doing an outdoor setting, then a gigantic 40 by 40 foot green screen could be a problem because not everybody has one of them in their garage. So uh, something uh, maybe to this effect where I've got now the same guy duplicated in an outdoor video. Three, three times. Now you'll notice that the quality of the guys at the back isn't that great and I did that on purpose. Uh, well, purpose I wouldn't say. Yeah, purpose. Because I was just too lazy to do it perfect. And why? Because this is a tutorial and I will show you later why I was lazy. <laughs> That's the best I got. Um, unfortunately, uh, programs like Video Studio Adobe Premiere and all them, they're video editing softwares and although some are greater than others with uh, allowing you to do certain things, it's going to be very difficult to, for them to do uh, advanced special effects and that's where we use a program called Adobe After Effects. You may have heard of it, you may even own a copy but never thought to use it because you just don't know how. But if you want to create this type of effect, then I would suggest you start learning more about Adobe After Effects. But, did I just say but twice? Anyway, uh, if you follow me on this little tutorial, I will teach you how to do rotoscoping with uh, Adobe After Effects. So let's go to Adobe After Effects. All right, now don't panic. I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to use Adobe After Effects rotoscoping. So if you've never used it, then uh, stick around. Now the best one at the moment is Adobe After Effects CS5. And why? It's uh, simple because in the CS4 version, when you did rot rotoscoping, you had to go with a pen tool and outline your, your character. But not anymore. They've uh, done away with that. So let's open up Adobe After Effects. And in your project window, right-click, Import, file and then just grab your little clip that you have that you want to add or edit whatever double click bring it in alright so first thing we need to do is bring this into our composition window here so how do we do this very simple you got these icons at the bottom just drag it on that looks like a little film film roll and release and that releases in your composition window or your preview window, whatever you want to call it. Your mouse wheel zooms in and out. Your spacebar held down creates a hand, and then you can move the photo around. Okay, all your magic happens in this window. So first thing we need to do is we need to trim this video. So double click, and then just move your scrubber tool at the bottom until you say yep. Yeah. Right. So there's the first character. Just like uh, any trimming software, set point in. Move it along to where he's just about to leave the scene. Set point out. Okay. So now what you're doing is you're telling the video uh, or Adobe After Effects any effect that I'm going to work with now will only be applied in this section here. The video is still there. Everything's still there. But you're just you're just telling what the uh, what you want to do. All right. So I'm going to zoom in. Grab my space tool. My space button. My space tool and then release and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on this little icon here which says Rotor Brush Tool it's a little man with a gigantic paintbrush click on that once and my cursor now turns into a green circle with a plus and why CS5 is great is because without with the pen tool I had to meticulously go around the character not anymore I just have to paint where I want my outline it's that simple, right? Now, instantly, a purple line came around the character. And basically what I'm saying is everything within this purple line, I want you to keep, and everything else, I want you to mask out. Okay? Now, underneath here, you've got a little bar. 
and then you just drag that little bar in line with your footage. You can go as far as you want, it doesn't matter. But just do about there. And that way you're just telling once again that you want to rotoscope the whole section out. Alright, so let's go back to the beginning. Now you'll see that maybe the color of the hair and the, the background is the program's having problems with. So you need to manually adjust it. So with your old key pressed down, your cursor turns red, and just highlight that, and then it pulls it right in. A right, little bit too much. If you want to add, just click on it, and there you go. So now it looks much better. So as you can see, you will need to go through your footage piece by piece, and that is why, my friends, I was lazy putting my uh, clip together, uh, my demo clip together, because this is the time-consuming part. It'll do its best, but every once in a while it, it will just not look good. And then that's where you manually have to adjust it for the software. Wow, look at that. I wonder what that looks like. Okay. Now if you want to increase your cursor, control, left mouse key, and basically is move your cursor up and your mouse up and down, and then it decreases it and makes it a big or small. Just keep moving it. And you just keep doing this over the entire footage. It's a little bit tedious, but the effect is worth it. And you can do it a lot better than what I did because mine was just a rough sample. And uh, to give you an idea of what we're talking about before, everything is now masked out that's not within that purple line, and everything in that purple line is then kept. And from some of you are probably sitting there going, aha, I, uh, I know what he's going to do. Correct. I'm going to save this footage the way it looks now, and then I'm just going to import that into my video studio and turn and use it in my overlay track, and then mask and chroma key this out. Simple, huh? So now, once I have gone through the whole process of uh, looking through my clip and going, "Yep, everything is good. Everything is good," you've got these three features as well. Uh, if you use choke, basically what we're doing is you're shrinking the purple line. So you can just become a little bit tighter because when you use the mouse and, you, and you're adding and subtracting it, it's not always going to be perfect. So the choke will then help you significantly. Same with the smooth. The smooth will do relatively the same thing. You just see how I've got... Uh, these sh they look kind of little sharp edges or pointy, and then I can just smooth that out a bit. Just makes it neater. And feather is a really interesting uh, feature as well. What it basically will do for you is soften the edges so it blends in nicely with your main track. Now, once you've done all this work, once you've done, you've lined everything up, everything's good. You press this little icon here, freeze. It's going to then re-render everything so that the footage has been told that everything within this purple has to be saved. If you do not do this then uh, all your work is in vain. Alright, okay, almost done. As you can see it's all over the place but it's a demo so it doesn't bother me. Anyway, once you have finished uh, and you're happy with everything, go into Composition, Add to Render Queue. And this will allow you to save it. If you've got an option here called Output Module, click on Lossless. And that gives up your settings of how or format that you wish to save. Uh, the format I would recommend is QuickTime. QuickTime, you've got the format options, right? what type of video codec you want. And it gives you quite a list here. And I would recommend Photo JPEG because it gives a really good quality with without having a high... Um, eating up a lot of memory as well. So press OK. And once you've done all of that, and you're happy with everything, uh, sorry, output, this is basically you give it a name and where it's uh, saved in your computer. Output. And then just press render and then it will then put everything together for you, save the file and put it in your folder that you have designated. Okay, so once you've done all that, go into your video studio, get your track that you wish to work with. So. Uh, I'm going to work with this track here. This is the clip that I was I showed you as my demo. So I only need uh, the 
the part where he's standing here. I've got everything here. As you can see, I've got everything here. But I don't need all that. So I trimmed my video already for this section. And now I'm just going to import that video or the uh, the thing from uh, Adobe After Effects that I was working on. I'm going to drag it into my overlay track. Yes, yeah, so I've done it already. All right. Right click, fit the screen. And now I'm just going to mask out the black. Mask and chroma key. Apply it to my overlay layer. And voila, there he is. And I'm just going to adjust my tolerance a bit so he comes up a little bit sharper. There you go. And that's it. He's all done. So as you can see, I uh, managed to get this uh, done relatively quickly. <laughs> and then it's just a matter of how many times you want to duplicate yourself. Uh, it's just uh, you videotaping yourself at various points and then that's it. And that, my friend, is what rotoscoping is. So if, uh, you can use Adobe After Effects for just about everything and combine that with your Corel Video Studio. And as always, thanks for watching.